Hello everyone, it's me Ivan, and today I am making CopperCube 6 tutorial video. CopperCube 6 is a game engine which is available for free. Link is in the description, you can download it and follow along. This is an advanced version of the tutorial, which means that you must have a basics knowledge on how to use CopperCube 6. You can either check out my older videos on CopperCube 6, or download the game engine and try it out on your own. Today, I am making a specific tutorial about how to use PSX Shader developed by Sam Grady. Link will be in the description, you can download that shader. I had a tutorial previously about where do you put the plugins and where do you put the actions and behaviors to use for CopperCube 6. Please check out that video. You must put those in the documents, CopperCube 6 Ambiera extensions and plugins. This is available in the previous tutorial and please do so before watching this. Now, if you have PSX Shader downloaded and installed, let's make it work. First off, before starting every tutorial, I remind you guys that on the display we have five main windows. We have Scene Graph Explorer, which tells us about the things and objects in our game, Cube Mesh, Startup Skybox. We have Second Properties, which tells about attributes, materials, behavior. We have Prefabs, where you can, you know, get the prefab and just put it in your game. We have Textures window, where you can see all the textures available here. And we have the main window, which is this one. Now, how to use PSX Shader? First of all, I'll delete the skybox because I don't need the skybox in my scene. Okay. And uh, let's put the background color to black. Okay. Now we have this cube mesh. It has a texture, as you can see, right? So what we do with this texture, first of all, what I do is go to view, go to show ear edit properties, then go to materials right here, scroll down and do this right there. As you can see, look at the cube, the filter changed. Can you see that? became more sharp. Now let's close this one. And now let's go to publish and let's go to publish test application. As you can see, we have cube, just a regular cube, nothing much. Now how to put a PSX shader effect on this one? You go to new 3D scene, you go to behaviors and you click on this plus. Now you go to scripted behaviors and you will have lots of scripts or maybe you won't have any scripts here. Those are all available on the CopperCube 6 forum and I also gave the resources uh, links where you can find some of these behaviors. And right down here we must find PSX shader. You must find PSX shader. You click on that and here we go. PSX Shader. Now what you have to do next is go here. Before first drawing, do something. Click also on Reload. That's important because every time, if you make a game, if you make a scene, it will do this every single time. So you need this, absolutely. And then you go Action. Plus again. Now you go all the way down to Scripted Actions. And you must find, once again, PSX Shader. That's the important part. You should focus on that. Do not look for all those because you might not have these. Just have this PSX Shader. You click on that and it says Node. Now, with the node, we must click and select the node which we have in our scene graph. Now we have only one node. So let's click Cube Mesh. OK. OK. And now when I press test the application right here, it will show the PSX shader applied to the object. Here we go. 
Do you see that? Look, it's applied on this object. Now, there are properties in PSX Shader which you can uh, change. The d uh, dether uh, intensity is the type of like particles that are around the cube. Like I will show you here. Like, do you see there is like some type of like particle thing going on? That's dethering. Uh, the color depth is uh, the change of the like mostly saturation. Like if I press 10, for example, right? And then I press this, you can see it's kind of like changed a little bit. It changed. Uh, jitter effect is, let's uh, click on, this is, this is the variable I do. So as you can see, it's not jittering anymore. And you can see the uh, warp effect, right? The warp effect. I can change that also to this number and it will stay still. Now, as you can see, it just stays still, but it has that PSX effect. Now, if you have an object which is specifically made for the PSX games, like special PSX assets, which I also mentioned in the previous tutorials, you can use that asset and apply this to the same asset and the uh, final result will be much better. Because this one, this is not a PSX uh, object. It doesn't have the proper PSX uh, uh, texture. So uh, it's, it won't work. It won't work. Now, we have one other thing here. You can set this like this. Like you have... You can have objects like this in the game. Let me explain. Let's go to create. Let's go to create room. As you can see, simple room. Let's go to flats. Uh, let's go ceiling texture. Let's pick this one. Okay. And wall height is fine. Okay. Let's click OK. Now we created a simple room. Now let's go to mesh. It's a room. Uh, let's go to advanced settings, double sided materials. Do that for every single one of them, right, here. And now if we press this, you can see that this one, see, has the PSX shader, but this one does not. What should we do? The same thing. First off, go to Mesh, click on Mesh, go to View, the Properties, show IRR Edit Properties, go down here, Bilineal filter, do this, then go here, second, do the same thing, go here, third, do the same thing. Close this one. Now let's go to new scene 3D, go to behaviors, go to before, first, drawing, do something, go here, and add another PSX shader. Go to scripted actions, you should have this, it's very important, PSX shader. And choose the node Mesh 1. Click OK. And now both the room and this has that PSX shader. Now let me quickly do this with a couple of things. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's make an armchair. Right? This is a, this is a prefab right here. Put it here. Uh, let's uh, choose um, a door right here. Right? Now let's do the same thing with those objects. I'm just making a sample, right? Uh, so go here. Advanced settings. Okay. This is very, very simple. Go do this one also. This one has two... Um, Okay, do this. And yeah. Now let's go back again to new 3D scene behavior. Add scripted actions PSX. Let's add for the armchair. And let's add for the door. And if we press test application, you can see that all of them have that PSX shader applied to it. 
Now, you can have a game which doesn't have a proper lighting system. Like, you can make something like this, right? You can make something like this and have this effect throughout the game. What you can also do is go to New 3D Scene Attributes and you can press on Fog and make this fog black and change the density to 0 0.01 and if we press test it will have a bit of darker you know tone it won't be bright it will be dark so here this is bright this is dark this is bright this is dark okay now but not even i want a light in my game so if you want the light in your game go again to new 3d scene behavior and on the PSX shader, you can use the light. And there are four choices, A, B, C, D. So use light, but we have to create the light. So what you do is go create point light right here. And then right here, you go to PSX shader and you, cho and you choose the light node, light one. And you can see the big difference right now. So once again, this is without the light. This is without the light. Now this is with the light. Do you see the difference? Do you see that? You can change the radius to 20 and it will be a bit dark like this. Yeah, it looks more spooky. You can change it to five and if you look like this see now that's very dark you can have 10 you can place one here clone this one and you should go to new 3d scene to psx shader and choose another light node press play and now you have two light nodes which are on the opposite of the room. And you can have three light nodes. See? And also four light nodes. Now, I'm not the author of this shader. Like I said, it was created by Sam Grady, but probably you can add more lights. I'm not sure. So here, go click on this. Click on this. And now if you press test application, you will have multiple lights around the room. What you can also do with this, delete all that, go to light one and set this to 20. Now I will add a character. So how you add the character, go create camera, third person shooter camera. Okay. Publish. Here we go. We have a third person camera. But see, there is this light just going around here and it's not going much anywhere. What you can do is click on this light and throw it over the camera. Then you click on the light again and at the position you press zero. Now if we can press and test application, what you can see is that the light actually follows the character. Do you see that? It actually follows the character. So that's one thing you can do if you want to make a scary game or if you want to make a flashlight. You can change the distance. What you can do is just make a light source that follows the player and that will be it. Of course, the geometry of the light isn't the way it's supposed to be you can fix that if you are good at coding but uh, that's that's the best that you can get yeah and that's it for the tutorial once again this was just a primary sample of how to use psx shader specifically for copper cube 6 one thing that you should know is that the shader is not applied to billboards to water surfaces uh, and if you apply it to for example uh, something like a smoke right 
to this one. It probably won't work. Let's see if it does. I never tried it, but let's see if it does. Hold on. And no, it's, uh, it's not working on the smoke. As you can see, the smoke stays the way it is. It's not... You can say you can see that invalid node type PSX shader cannot be applied to mesh billboard or animated mesh node, so it cannot be applied to this. Sadly, sadly. But uh, like I said, the link for the shader is in the description. You can check it out. Maybe you can modify it. You can change it and use it as you wish in a game, in any type of game. That was it for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. I want to apologize for the lack of these tutorials because number one, they're not easy to make. Number two, they do not work sometimes with people. And when you make a tutorial, there are lots of more questions uh, than before you made you know, a tutorial because some people don't understand how some things work and I have to tell them to go to basics and first of all start, you know, just using the CopyCube 6 game engine before trying to make anything else. So that's my advice. Definitely, first of all, start using the game engine before trying to make a game or trying to create something. So yeah, I hope to make some other advanced tutorials as well with the enemy, with the third person camera and things like that uh, very soon. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching and I wish you all an amazing day. Goodbye.